सेकेंड लेक्चर ऑन कॉम्यूटेटर आल जावरा टूडे वी शेल में डिस्कस द कॉम्यूटेटर आल जावरा इन्वॉल्विंग एंगुलर मोमेंट स्पेशली स्पेशली द इन्वॉल्विंग द कार्टिशियन कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ एंगुलर मोमेंट हम ऑपरेटर लेट मी फर्स्ट रिकैपिचुलेट व्हाट वी हैव आर्लियर वी हैव फाउंड दैट क्यू अल्फा क्यू बीटा the commutator is zero that is q alpha q beta commutes p similarly is p alpha p beta they also found to commute and q alpha p beta q alpha p beta commutes if alpha is not equal to beta and for alpha beta we have the fa- fundamental commutator relation <coughs> um now we uh, come to the angular momentum definition of angular momentum angular momentum in classical math physics angular momentum l vector is defined as r vector cos p vector so it defines uh, the angular momentum with its components uh its component lx is equal to ypz minus zpy ly is equal to zpx minus xpz lz is equal to xpy minus y px in general we can write l alpha is equal to epsilon alpha beta gamma q alpha p beta for q as we have already may introduced q1 means x q2 y q3 is equal to z p1 as P1 is Px, P2 is Py, and P3 is Pz. And epsilon, the Lewis beta tensor, is defined like this. This is equal to plus one. Epsilon one, three, two is equal to epsilon two, one, three is equal to epsilon. Three to one is equal to minus one, and here we uh, sorry this is q beta p gamma. Sorry, I, please note the correction p beta q gamma, and the repeated index the the repeated index has to be summed over. so basically if we write it explicitly it stands for beta gamma is equal to 1 to 3 epsilon alpha beta gamma q beta p gamma so the combination if we consider alpha is equal to x oh let me come there are all together 27 components of epsilon r uh, i j k the lewis beta tensor in 3d um of for three index so only six of them have distinct indices and they are non zero and for quant epsilon having repeated index are zero uh, so there are 21 zeros all together now if we consider alpha is equal to 1 then the combination will have since alpha is equal to 1 beta could be 2 or 3 so if we write it explicitly it is say um, what happens with alpha with alpha is equal to 1 l1 is as equal to l x or l alpha is equal to l1 is equal to l x now come to this here epsilon alpha is 1 so the combination is beta could be 2 and 3 so beta 2 and another part 1 3 
If beta is 2, then the only non-zero value is gamma is 3. In that case, it is Q2, P3 and it has, this is Q3, P2. So this is 1, Q2 means Y, Z, this is 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 2 is minus 1. So this is minus, this is Z, P, Y, which is this definition, basically this definition. So in general, if we have two ve a vector C, which is the cost product of two vectors A and B, A and B, then Ci can be written, the ith component can be written as epsilon i j k a j b k and repeated in the sum over repeated index is implied as per Einstein's summation convention. So we, if we come to the um, classical quantum part, quantum uh, definitions of this, in quantum mechanics these are denoted by the corresponding Hermitian operators. So we have, this is classical mechanics. In quantum mechanics we have L vector operator is equal to R vector operator cross P vector operator. So Lx operator is equal to Y operator, Pz operator minus Z operator, Py operator. And finally, L alpha operator is equal to epsilon alpha beta gamma Q beta P gamma. <coughs> this definition is valid uh, in the general definition. If we write a, uh, if we write it as minus I H cross Y del del Z minus z del del x z del del y these are these definitions are valid only in position basis so everything has been expressed in terms of position coordinates so these are the special definition we shall try to prove the result in terms of these general definitions first thing uh, we define l square operator L square operator is defined as vector L, sorry, vector, so it is defined as L square operator. This is equal to in terms of Cartesian components. This becomes L x operator square, L y operator square, L z operator square. So first thing we want to see the commutator relation involving the angular momentum. I am coming to the, with this definition I am coming to the com properties of uh, commutators. So first I see that L square commuting with Lx. Also oh, now we will require for other relations to de define this. So let me first calculate this one. X Lx commutator. This is X This is x, y, p, z. 
माइनस एक्स जेड पी वाई दिस कैन बी स्प्लिट अप इनटू टू कंपोनेंट्स एक्स वाई कम्यूटेटर जेड कमिंग फ्रॉम द राइट पी जेड प्लस वाई कमिंग फ्रॉम द लेफ्ट कम्यूटेटर ऑफ एक्स पी जेड एक्स जेड कम्यूटेटर वाई कमिंग फ्रॉम पी वाई कमिंग फ्रॉम राइट माइनस जेड कमिंग फ्रॉम लेफ्ट जेड कमिंग फ्रॉम लेफ्ट एक्स पी वाई all these zeros this is zero this is zero this is zero this is zero so this is zero if we consider y p x i sorry y l x the everything will remain the same only this x in the first place will be replaced by y so this is y y जेड जीरो देन दिस इज अगेन जीरो दिस इज जीरो माइनस y y p y this is i h cross this is equal to i h cross so this result is minus i h cross z जेड कॉम्पोनेंट फॉर जेड कॉम्पोनेंट ऑनली दिस विल बी रिप्रेस बाय जेड 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 वाई पी जेड प्लस वाई जेड पी जेड दिस इज इक्वल टू आई एच क्रॉस दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो this is z z p y zero this is again zero so the result is i h cross y cap there are a uh, three more relations involved at uh, six more relations in the the three relations with ly and three relations with lj mm. so we uh, instead of carrying out all these nine relation let me carry out the single relation all these nine relation in a single calculation so we consider q alpha l beta this commutator <coughs> for q alpha it is for l beta we write beta gamma delta q gamma p delta note that the summation over gamma delta is implied so taken epsilon by out the quantity will be q alpha q gamma p delta this can be split into two parts epsilon 
वन इज कम्यूटेटर ऑफ क्यू अल्फा क्यू गामा क्यू अल्फा क्यू गामा पी डेल्टा अपेयरिंग फ्रॉम राइट एंड कम्यूटेटर ऑफ This is zero, and this is uh, h cross delta of alpha delta. So the result is i h cross epsilon beta gamma delta. This one plus delta of alpha delta p gamma. If you carry out uh, the sum over delta, so delta will be replaced by alpha. So the result is I H cross epsilon beta gamma alpha p gamma. Uh, sorry, q gamma. Uh, I have written it. This is q gamma. so this will be q gamma now the this uh, lewis beta tensor can be written as this beta gamma alpha can be written as b minus beta alpha gamma one in touch and so a minus sign then again i want to change plus alpha beta gamma so we write it i h cross epsilon alpha beta gamma q gamma you see whether this matches with the relation this is 1 1 so epsilon 1 1 repeated index is 0 so the result is 0 If we want two one, so this epsilon two one three is minus one, minus one. And in this case, we have th this case three one two three one two is positive. So the result is this. So we write this all this relation in a compact way by this. so the first relation involving angular momentum algebra is this q alpha l beta is equal to i h cross epsilon alpha beta gamma q gamma now we consider the commutator of p's <laughs> the commutator of p's can be uh, done uh, p and l's can be done in this way uh, so we write p x l y will be zero so we consider a non zero term this is this is p x l y means Shed p x minus x x p z with caps. So we will have firstly this commutator minus. this will result in two commutator one with px with z which is zero px with px which is again zero so this term is zero here we will have two commutator one is px with x which is non zero and px with pz is zero so the result is minus px x pz coming from the right This is equal to minus I H cross, so that is plus I H cross P Z. 
if you calculate this uh, with LZ, you will have minus IH cross L A P Y. So again, all these relations can be written in an elegant way using Leibniz beta extensions. Um, they are all nine relations. This is epsilon, beta, gamma, delta. I am skipping steps. P alpha. Q gamma P delta. Here we will have two uh, commutators, one with P alpha with Q, which is non maybe non zero, and P, P alpha P delta is zero. So we write epsilon beta gamma delta P alpha Q gamma P delta this is equal to minus ih cross delta of alpha gamma so this is minus ih cross epsilon beta gamma delta beta gamma delta delta of alpha gamma p delta if you sum over gamma then this will be if we make an interchange this becomes plus ih cross epsilon alpha beta ga delta p delta since delta is a dummy variable this can as well be written as I H cross epsilon alpha beta gamma p gamma. So the relations are found to be symmetric. Uh, this becomes I H cross epsilon alpha beta gamma p gamma. So if you take the commutator with Q, then if Q appears, if we take with commutator with P, P appears. If we ca carry on this symmetry, we may expect that this perceived space, let me write it over here. P alpha L beta is equal to IH cross alpha beta gamma P gamma continuing this we may expect L alpha L beta is equal to R H cross alpha beta gamma L gamma. Does this relation hold? Let us calculate this. But this time the mathematics involved or the summation involved will be very <coughs> tough. So um try to follow carefully L alpha L beta so hats I am for the time being just uh, not putting the hats they are there for this I write alpha gamma delta Q gamma P delta for this we write beta mu mu q mu p mu two epsilons are taken out alpha gamma delta beta mu mu the commutator that is left is q, q gamma p delta Q gamma P delta Q 
cube mu p nu there will be four four commutator will arise one with this this is zero so you need not to consider this will give you a non vanishing contribution this will give you a non vanishing contribution and this is zero and need not to consider so we will have two commutators epsilon alpha gamma delta epsilon beta mu nu first is q with q gamma p nu and this will have these two will appear from the left so sorry sorry uh, this will appear from the left and this will appear from the right now we will have another commutator involving this p delta q mu delta q mu so this will appear q gamma from the left and p nu from the right i hope the step is clear there are four uh, commutator this involves four commutator the only non zero commutator is when q commutes with p this is q commutes with p p delta appears from right q q mu appears from left and for this p delta this q gamma appears from left and p nu appears from right this part is i h cross delta of mu nu and this part is minus i h cross delta of delta mu so what i do i take i h cross common then this term if the this new sum is carried over new will be replaced by gamma so we write it epsilon alpha gamma delta epsilon beta mu for new we write gamma so this is due to the this delta function property q mu p delta minus two epsilon are there beta and if you perform sum over mu then mu will be replaced by delta so this is beta delta mu q gamma p if we look at this there are there is a repeated index gamma gamma and if we consider this two term there is a repeated index delta here no delta there is no gamma so we write it as even we take delta on the either on the left so there is a one interchange required mu sorry i will take gamma to the end so this will be alpha delta gamma beta mu gamma p delta this term is same. so due to this one interchange the minus sign has appeared here the repeated index is delta so if we again interchange delta to the right the sign will be plus
बीटा नहीं है डेल्टा Now we shall apply the uh, a very important property of uh, Lebesgue beta tensor, which is epsilon i j k epsilon l m k. This repeated index means sum over k is there. The result is delta i l. Sorry, delta i l delta of J M minus delta of I M delta of J L. So first suffix, second suffix. First, uh, second, second first with a minus sign. This is an important property. Note that this is valid only when sum over the repeated index is done. Here, this convention we are can continuing. So we will. Uh, come to uh, i h cross from this a minus sign is there so there are two deltas one is alpha beta uh, first first delta of second second minus first second alpha mu delta of second first so we write beta delta multiplied by the quantity q mu p delta i am reducing this because it may create confusion so this minus sign is there alpha beta Ga delta mu, alpha mu, beta delta, and this term p mu, p delta. From here we will have again two delta functions. Delta of alpha beta, delta of. There is a mistake. A mistake. I have done a mistake. Uh, let me uh, check. Alpha gamma delta. Alpha gamma delta. If we uh, the new will be replaced by del new will be replaced by delta. So new new will be replaced by gamma. New will be replaced by gamma. So it's okay. Now, here yeah, first one is okay. Here it is alpha gamma delta alpha gamma delta. No, check the check this alpha gamma delta. And for the second one, I will replace mu by delta mu by delta beta delta. New, it's okay. Now it's okay. Here is a gone mistake. So the subsequent term may also be changed. Uh, delta. So um, this part will be alpha gamma delta, alpha gamma delta, and this is b new. Okay. Now the quantity will be first first alpha beta delta of gamma gamma nu second second first second first second so this is alpha nu and beta delta uh, sorry beta 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 gamma and this is q gamma p nu
this two term this delta mu delta mu is there and this term gamma nu gamma nu is there so you see that these two term with plus minus sign goes these two are identical terms uh, so only the dummy variable can be written anything so this goes so we are left with this term and this term the result is i h cross taken common i h cross taken common this term is positive and this term is negative this term is negative beta gamma <laughs> now mm, I'm coming to this step here um, there is sum over mu and sum over delta if we carry out the sums we will have i h cross if we sum carry out sum then this will be alpha this will be beta i h cross p alpha p beta I hope it is clear when mu sum is carried over mu will be replaced by alpha when delta sum is carried over delta will be sum or beta so this is the contribution of the first term coming to the second term if we carry out again sum over gamma and nu the result will be nu will be replaced by alpha so nu will be replaced by alpha p alpha and this is q beta this is i h cross if if we take alpha is equal to 1 beta is equal to 2 then it is lz so we write it alpha beta gamma l gamma so the relation holds so the, this is a very elegant way of expressing all this relation there are nine nine and nine so nine relations are put in a single relation now i come to the uh, commutator of l square operator with its uh, Cartesian components as we have already defined L square operator is L square axis L square operator is this LX so you consider LX with L, L square so this is lx commute with lx square plus ly square plus lz square uh, this will be lx lx square which is 0 plus lx ly square plus lx lz square so this is zero so you can write it twice lx ly plus twice lx lz I have missed 
L Y L Z L X L Y this is plus I H cross L Z and this is minus I H cross L Y so the result is twice I H cross this is L Z L Y this is L Y L Z is equal to 0 so it is similarly we can find for this is so for other components too so we conclude that we conclude that L square L X is equal to L square L Y is equal to L square L Z is zero although L X L Y L Z they do not commute among themselves L X L Y L Z this is a very interesting result so it may since that since L square commutes with all the three of its Cartesian components any one pair this or this or this will have simultaneous eigenvalue if we consider the simultaneous eigenvalue of L square and L Z this that function will not be an eigenfunction of L Y or of L X but we can have such we can have other choices the simultaneous eigenfunction of L square and L X will not be an eigenfunction of L Y or of L Z uh, in quantum mechanics because of the uh, because of the fact that vector atom model was given uh, prior to the development of quantum mechanics and in which one assumes the angular momentum quantum number and its projection along z direction so this choice is taken care of uh, and um, that is one finds the simultaneous eigenfunctions of l square and l z not of the others other reason is that um, if we if we deal with angular momentum algebra it is natural to opt for the spherical polar coordinate system in spherical polar coordinate system or any other coordinate system except the Cartesian Z axis has a special axis Z axis is a special of axis of symmetry so that the LZ operator in spherical polar coordinate system becomes very simple minus IH cross del 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 phi other operators will have uh, different will have complicated expressions involving both the different derivatives of theta and phi and furthermore if we look for this uh, the eigenfunction of this the eigenfunction is generally written as y l m theta phi known as spherical harmonics they are apart from normalization constant e to the power i m phi p p l m of cos theta where this is the associated legend or polynomial let me write it l m and we know that for a given l given l mod m is less than or equal to l which sets the sets the limitation of allowed m values that is m value ranges from minus l to plus l in steps of one this comes from uh, this relation another interesting angular momentum algebra arises with the definition of uh, introduction of ladder operator let us first define ladder operator and calculate few uh, relations of uh, ladder operator n plus is defined as lx plus i ly and l minus is defined as lx minus i ly they are not Hermitian operator as is obvious if we uh, take the 
dagger of L plus this is LX dagger minus I L Y dagger since the LX L Y they are Hermitian this is LX minus I L Y that is L minus similarly L minus dagger is L plus dagger so they are not Hermitian operators. Still, they are found to be very important in quantum mechanics. Without going into the evaluation of uh, eigenvalues, let, uh, let me just say the why it is said plus. So why it is called plus? When L plus operates on a state, it increases its M projection value by one. When L minus operates, it increases its project value by one minus one that's why they are of called L plus and L minus so keeping L M can be increased by operating L plus or it may be decreased by using L minus now first thing is that the commutator of L plus with LZ L plus with LZ so this is Lx plus Ily operating on Lz, all hats. This is Lx Lz plus Ily Lz. Lx Lz, this is one. 3 so this is 2 only 2 will come and the result is 1 epsilon 1 2 3 is equal to 3 1 2 uh, 3 1 2 is equal to uh, 2 3 1 this corresponds to plus 1 so this is 1 3 2 1 3 2 this is minus minus i h cross l y plus i and again i h cross 2 3 2 3 so this is plus uh, x this is is equal to minus take, take minus l x common uh, this is minus i h cross l y and this is minus h cross lx if we take minus h cross common lx plus i l y Similarly, we can calculate L minus LZ. This is LX LZ minus I LY LZ. This is minus IH cross LY as before and this is minus and yz so it is x this is plus ih cross lx so this becomes h cross plus h cross lx minus i h cross l y so this is l minus so these are the commutator relations so we can put these two together l plus minus operating on l z is equal to minus plus i h cross L plus minus. L square uh, found to be common to itself. 
I would L square and <coughs> L plus compound to commute with L square and also with L minus commutes with L square. So we write L square L plus minus is equal to zero because this is the only the Cartesian components of L. L. Another interesting thing would be to find out the commutator of L plus minus. Commutator of L plus L minus. This is left as homework. And by this we end our discussion on commutator algebra. In, in future classes we will apply this commutator relation to find out the eigenvalues and eigenve eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the operators mainly <coughs> the L square and L z and sometimes the act of L plus minus will also be um, studied.